Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at a few of your garden sheds. This is a viewer submission video where we asked you to send in pictures and information about sheds that you have in your garden. Uh, the last one we did like this was about raised beds. This whole series has been really fun. You know, we've done ponds and annual containers and all kinds of stuff. It's just fun to get ideas and see what other people are doing in their garden. And I'm really excited for this one because our shed out in the cut flower garden is almost done. And then we can start setting it up on the inside, so I'm really looking for some inspiration here. So let's see what we've got. First submission is from Astrid in Ohio, zone 6A. Oh, oh, I love the shakes on the side. What is it about shakes on the side of a building that just looks so charming? Oh, look, okay, so Astrid says, started the shed project in March of 2021, so this is brand new. Her very handy husband designed the shed on his computer using SketchUp, then lit literally dug in. He started with a gravel pad for underneath, so framed in with some wood there, nice uh, kind of blank slate, then built this beautiful 8 by 16 foot shed in our side yard. Some features he added were a Dutch door, which I love. I love that look, having just half the door open. It just looks so like inviting. Running water, electricity, shelves for all my garden supplies, chemicals, seedling trays, and a growing area to help harden off my early spring flowers. At first, friends would ask if it was a she shed, and I would say, no, it's a real working shed, which I love. I love that. I mean, I like a shed that's made to where you can go and read and relax and you know, just enjoy like a little private area, but it's also fun to see something be beautiful and really practical, like for actual gardening tasks as well. Um, the shed sits near a long fence garden where I plant my annual flowers. I really enjoy sitting in the front, um, in the front gravel area with a glass of wine and watch the sunset over the farm fields across the street. Phase two begins very soon. This spring, we are planning to add a border around the gravel base so I can plant more flowers and get my herbs into the ground. We'll use compost for the from from the two bins, which you can see right back behind the shed, to enrich the soil. I'll keep my big blue green container in front, especially after you featured it in one of your past um, viewer submission. Oh, videos, yes. Thank you for all the inspiration, Laura and Erin. That was, I knew it was familiar. So that teal pot, that teal blue pot in the front with all the coleus and the tuck grass. Yep, there it is. I like the rain chain there and the flower uh, arrangement. I'm not sure that my shed would ever look this tidy Astrid. It's gorgeous. I'm glad that we were able to see inside it after we got to see the container earlier. Next one is from Patty in Washington, zone eight. Oh, look at that. Oh, that reminds me a lot of the front of ours with the windows, with the panes, and then the double door up front, which the double door is so nice so you can get well, a lot of air and stuff flow through the shed, but then you can also get bigger things through if you need to. So Patty says, my husband gifted me a garden shed as my 60th birthday present. That's a really nice present. I designed it and worked with a local company. The shell was completed and we finished the inside ourselves. Oh, wait, hold on. There's an upper view from the house, it looks like. Boy, I see the sod went in, in your lawn there, a nice gravel pathway to that paver patio. And whatever river, are you on a river or a lake? Or that is a gorgeous setting right there. Jeez, that's pretty. Oh, there's the interior. You guys, look. Boy, that is definitely a place that you just wanna go like with a blanket and a book and just be. I like that the window's open. You can see that it's a type that will open up and give you some fresh air in there, a little heater. Oh, it's decorated for Christmas. I'm gonna do that in mine. There's a picture at night with some patio lights hanging all over the place. A picture in the winter time. For sure, it looks like it's snowing. Wow. Okay, more details. I get so distracted by the pretty pictures. Uh, we used old metal roofing for the ceiling, water-resistant vinyl for the floor, and beadboards for the walls. It's heated and stays quite warm with not much heat. It's well insulated. That's awesome. I fill it with things for my grandmother and mother and other vintage and new things. I changed the look for the season. When you do one thing in our yard, it leads in, always leads into another. I Yes, I can relate to that. So we had the yard leveled and sod put down. I love how it turned out. It was completed a year ago and the gardens are still evolving. Last May, took a trip to Boise and stopped at Andrew Seed, my parents' garden center, for some plants. Well, that is a really special shed, Patty. I love that. Loved seeing the seasonal decor. Next, we have Holly in Dallas, Texas, Zone 8B. That's a shed? Oh my goodness, look at that, you guys. 
That looks like a place I would want to go have a meal, doesn't it? Oh, like a really quaint and beautiful place to go have brunch or something. I don't know why I think that. <laughs> That's beautiful. The arch of the windows, the pitch of the roof, it's all, oh my goodness. Okay, Holly says, my garden shed is both functional and a happy place to relax. I mostly have houseplants and, the, and then overwinter others that are outside, so it gets pretty full in the winter, especially when Christmas decorations go up and all the plants go out. Oh, look at the bistro set, and there's another table back behind. Perfect place to sit and relax and enjoy a meal. Okay, are there measurements here? I wonder how wide, but I love the ceiling. Look at the detail there. The open ceiling with the beams. Okay, I have two closets in the back on either side that hold tools. So you can see those in this picture and other garden necessities and a lot of shelves for storage of pots and things. The stained glass came from a church that was torn down that my parents were married in in 1954 and I was baptized in 1961. That is so special. During COVID, I needed projects, so I added the flower mosaic that goes around the doors. Recently added a heat AC unit after Texas had the hard freeze for days and many plants died. I would have done the same exact thing just in case. So now in winter, I don't worry, and in the heat of the summer, I can get a glass of iced tea or a cocktail and retreat to my air-conditioned happy place. Love um, Garden Answer and watch every video. Thank you for that, Holly. And this space is just phenomenal. I love, I need to know where you got that table, like the one that looks like it's wood planks with the really scrolly bottom. I could use a table like that. That's gorgeous. And I like to see, though, in the background, you've got this gorgeous table and plants, but then you have shelving with pots sitting there that don't have anything in them yet. There's something about that that I think that speaks to every one of us gardeners. We all love to see things like that. That's just potential waiting right there. Next, we have Carrie in Kentucky, Zone 6B. Oh, look at that. That one kind of looks like a miniature church slash large version of the chicken coop I once built, but better. <laughs> That is so cute. I love the yellow. I think that is just so cheerful and happy with the white trim, little black accents in the top. What do they call those? Cupola, cupola, cupola? Erin, what do they call those? Cupolas? I never know how to say that word. Anyway, this is so cute. Okay, so Carrie said this started out as, a, out as a chicken coop. Well, that makes sense. But my husband got a little carried away with the materials. So while I do love my chickens, I deemed them unworthy. <laughs> it's now my potting shed and my happy place. Still new and a work in progress. Needs more landscaping around it. But that is happening all the time. And you know what? All of our gardens are in some state. Well, some of ours more than others. But uh, some state of evolving. You know, we're always adding things. Always have dreams of what we want to do and make create in different spaces. And um, that's the fun part. Oh my word. Look at that winter scene. That is like a Christmas card right there, picturesque. There's a view of the inside. And I was wondering, based on that first picture, seeing it from afar, I thought, are those walls blue in there? And they are. They're like a robin's egg blue-ish, kind of on the mint side. I don't know, really pretty. I like the shelf there, the boots, the galvanized can. That's a really cute look. Oh, and there's an even better view. Windows look like they open up. Really pretty table and chair in there too. That's awesome, Carrie, I love it. Next is from Patricia in Maine, zone 4B, which is chilly. Oh, look at how quaint that is. Perfect idea for any of you guys with a smaller space, smaller yards, and want ideas for storage in your garden. You don't need more than that. I mean, that is just really, really sweet. So Patricia said, this is a new shed made of cedar with a cedar shake roof, which I love. I use it for the tools I may need in that area of my garden. The flower decorations along the front are handmade by a local man and his two daughters. He also devised the drop-down table, which you can see there on the left. I can open when I need to pot up things and serves as a storage space when closed. That's awesome. So it doesn't have to be dropped down like that. You can keep it open if you want to put other things or you have something that's bulkier. But that's just perfect. You've got some pots. It looks like some ID stakes maybe in the pots. Hand tools, like your most used things, your rake and your kneeling pad, a watering can. That's just perfect. Let's see, are there other, yep, there's a side picture there. So not only the inside serves as storage, but you can you know, put some other things on the outside if needed. That is such a great idea, Patricia. Now we have Lacey in Oregon, zone 8B. Oh, that's a sweet one. That looks like our chicken coop. I mean, the, the shape of it, <laughs> exactly. Kind of, you know, tall in the front and kind of slopes down to the back. And Lacey said that she and her husband transformed our boy's sandbox into a garden shed in September of 2021. 
So this is a brand new shed. My dad made the sandbox 16 years ago and my four boys have spent countless hours enjoying it. My youngest still loves it. So we kept the sand for the time being. The construction's a little janky because I was determined to maintain the same frame and use as much of the original materials that my dad had built it with as possible, which is really special. We had so much fun working on it and I now, and now I just love having it in my garden. I use it for storage, plant care, and reprieve during sudden rain showers we often have in the spring. I'm so thankful that it reminds me both my dad's love for my boys and for the time my husband and I spent together repurposing it. It is a joy. Thank you for all you guys do and for the opportunity to share. She has an Instagram at My Rustic Gardens. What a fun uh, shed and what a fun memory you'll always have with that shed. Next one is from Bobby in Virginia, Zone 6B. Okay, so we've got kind of a standard shed right there. I like the colors, very kind of neutral, but the white trim makes it pop. The light is really cute, that kind of farm style light, which I'm kind of toying with with for our shed because our barn has those types of lights it might look good to kind of carry on that same kind of design theme that's kind of side note sorry but look at that red bud blooming to the left of that shed isn't that gorgeous so bobby says it's the perfect place to make flor floral arrangement and store all of my vases which you can see right here look at that don't you just want to be in that space just d doing stuff I love seeing, seeing supplies like this and how you have decided to store them like in those apple crates. Um, I even use it to do some filming for my small but growing YouTube channel called uh, Gardening on Taylor Mountain. Oh, and then she wrote the word shameless plug right there. That's totally fine. I'll have to check you out. I especially love the fact that I was able to use some of the apple boxes from our family farm orchard as shelving. My husband hung some wooden trellises on the ceiling from all of my dried flowers. Even though my garden shed is small, post-COVID prices have doubled. Oh, I know. It's just horrible. I really love it. We still have a few finishing touches to do, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And of course, I was inspired to hint for one because of yours. Oh, I love it, Bobby. Next one is from Mickey in Washington, Zone 8B. That can't be a shed. Is that a shed? That looks like a house. Okay, I gotta read up here. We bought a shed at Lowe's, at Lowe's, and customized it with extra windows and centered the door. We then added a porch deck. <laughs> I love the detail. We downsized last year to a 900 square foot bungalow and I realized I needed my own space since our living space was quite limited. I use it as a place to relax, work on my garden design, hence the drafting table. That is so pretty. It looks so peaceful. A lot of light in there and I see that shelf up above for storage. Chandelier. I love it. Next we have Jen in Austin, Texas zone 8B. A lot of zone 8s today. Whoa, look at that. Ooh, the color of that one is really fun. Black with the wood doors and then that, uh, they kind of like coppery. This is a night picture. So let me see if there's a daytime picture. Ooh, that is so cool. Very much so like a modern kind of flair to it. Oh, I love that color scheme though, so much. So Jen said this shed is basically here because of you, Laura. Once upon a time I bought a fiddle leaf fig, wondered how to care for it, and my search led me to your, to your YouTube channel. I was immediately hooked and so began my transition into more serious gardening, which led to the need for a shed, of course. Of course it does. So this shed is a 12 by six. Um, right now we have electricity run through an extension cord only to power a string of Christmas lights inside at night. Let me see if there, let's see the other pictures here. Oh, look at that. The floor is peel on vinyl for easy cleanup. The shed houses all of my gardening tools, fertilizers, extra pots, and soils. I re refinished an old secondhand hutch to use as my potting bench. Let's see. Oh, look at that. That is super cute. I really love our doors. I found them for $50 on Facebook Marketplace and we hung them from the inside with barn door hardware. To store the tools, we've used leftover scrap wood to create corrals between the studs and hung various hooks and nails we already had. It's also really nice uh, to use as a place to overwinter potted plants instead of having to pull them all in the house. Oh, look at the look at the snow. She said, we don't often get snow here, but I made sure to include a rare snow picture for you. Thank you for that. So many good ideas. Ugh. Next, we have Kathy in Delaware Zone 7B. Oh, isn't that the perfect way to, to frame your shed? So the white arbor with the gate, fenced in, looks like raised bed garden situation going on there with the shed sitting in the back. That's so picturesque. And I love the colors too. White is just very peaceful. And then the soft gray with the soft yellow door. Ugh. There's a close up of the shed. The little window boxes, that's so cute. And oh, there's something that goes out toward the back. So more storage out the back that I didn't even know existed. That is always nice. And you'll always fill it somehow. There's the interior. 
I like the work counter and the shelves and the tool storage there. Okay, so Kathy said the shed and the garden are located at the former site of an above ground swimming pool. So electricity and water service was already present. Isn't that nice? The shed is eight feet by 12 feet and is equipped with electric outlets, vent fans, overhead lights, and a utility sink with running water and drainage to a nearby ditch. The back wall is covered with engineered hardwood flooring left over from a home improvement project. The floor is covered with one foot square weather tech floor tiles that are perfect for a garden shed. Um, the lean to shed attached to the back is used to hold pots, containers, and bags of soil and compost. Construction was 100% DIY beginning in 2019 and completed, completed in 2021. So establishing the garden is now only getting underway. It's still mostly cold here in Delaware, so nothing has been planted yet this year. Oh, I can't believe that that's all DIY because that's amazing. Great job. Next, we have Linda in California, zone 9B. Oh, I love all the colorful flowers. This is a summer picture, it looks like. And this looks an awful lot like the last shed we looked at. Kind of the same roof line with the cupola and the weather vane. Uh, I like the two windows and door. It's all very quaint and charming looking. Oh, and the window boxes. Linda said, our shed, which we call our garden house, is a kit shipped from Ohio with walls and roof in sections. Window ins windows were installed in their section. It was built in summer of 2021. Boy, you've already got quite the garden going on around it. Got brand new. There is one single door on the long side and the double doors on one of the short sides so one could get a mower inside, but put that side out of sight uh, because I don't need it for that and wanted the solid side toward the garden against which to grow tall dahlias, hollyhock, and sunflowers. Okay, so there's the side there to grow nice big tall flowers. They hired a contractor to put the sections together and the foundation and flooring and roof sheeting not included in the kit. The shed is very well constructed and I like that it looks more like a house. I love that too. Oh my, look at the inside. Did you say how big this was? It looks enormous from this picture. There's so much in there. Look at all those shelving units with all the supplies. I like your rug too. Did you get that rug at Home Depot? <laughs> I was just looking for that exact rug and our store was out or something that looks very similar to that. The inside has shelves for growing seeds under lights as well as many garden necessities that are best out of sight. I plant seedlings and upgrade them to six packs um, at the desk with a nice window and light and calendar right there. Um, <laughs> having the growing medium close by is so handy. The side with the double doors and the back are hidden from general view, which is so helpful for, for storage. Future plans are to add insulation and drywall because it gets so beastly hot there in there in the summer. Yeah, that will be helpful. That is such a cute shed, Linda. I love it. And the last shed we're going to look at today is from Kimberly in California, zone 10A. Oh, that's cute. On the bottom, it's like kind of Hartley-esque, isn't it? With the brick bottom and then the white up top. Oh, I love all the windows, the white, the black accents. That is so cute. The garden though, like if we look at that first picture again, you can see the raised beds. Your garden looks so beautiful. And there's a picture of the inside with the workbench. Do you have a fridge in there? It's a good idea. Oh, that's awesome. We had an old 10 by 10 shed that we decided to remodel during quarantine. Drawing huge inspiration from Garden Answer, I told my husband that I wanted it to look like uh, what I wanted it to look like and he did all the work himself, including building the custom Dutch door and barn style door on the storage side. We split the space in half so that I could look out on the yard while working in the space. The overhang on the back extends out so I can use it to store bags of soil and tools. Well, that is awesome. I love that little shed. And you guys, that is it for today's video on garden sheds. Thank you to all of you who took the time to send pictures and, and information. Uh, we really do appreciate it. These videos are just such a wealth of inspiration. Um, I mean, I know just by all of these, I'm kind of like, oh, I can incorporate this and this and this and this. Such a great time to do for us <laughs> to do a video like this right when we're in the finishing stages of completing ours, which again, it will be evolving. I've got a few things to put in there, but it'll take some time to get them all set up like most uh, spaces do. I think the next submission video we should do since we're kind of going into the season where we're starting to plant annuals in the landscape is how we've used annuals in garden beds. So not in containers, but how you've planted annuals, maybe in drifts or how you've utilized them to bring color into different areas of your garden, sun or shade. So that's it, annuals in the landscape. We will put a link to a form where you can fill that out and send us pictures and inf information about your gardens. And I'm not sure when we'll actually get to filming it. In fact, it took us a while to get the shed video because we typically you know, utilize nice days outside to get outside projects done, but it's really lovely to have projects 
projects like this to work on when it's crummy out. And right now it's in the 30s and it's raining and wind is blowing out there. So it's such a nice thing to do to come in here and be able to be filled up with inspiration, get re-energized to get back out there and do some stuff. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.